A major part of resilience is about how we handle stress in our everyday lives. We are presented with challenges every day and how we respond to them determines whether we are resilient or not. Stress in general can reduce the capacity for resilience, but not all stress is bad for us. There are two types of stress that we face at one time or another, eustress and distress. Eustress is good stress, and it occurs when the gap between what we want and what we have is slightly pushed, but not in ways that lead us into feeling overwhelmed, while distress is the opposite of eustress and is bad for resilience. Eustress, healthy stress. Temporarily suffering can help us reach a successful path because pressure has the capability of building diamonds. Stress can be perceived as a healthy process or an unhealthy process based on how our mind interprets them. Rethink stress. So many times what we know now the research is telling us is that it's not necessarily just stress that's bad for us. It's the way we perceive that stress. So when we perceive stress is bad for us, we tend to try to numb it. We try to escape it, not wanting to feel that discomfort. When in reality, if we view stress as our body just preparing ourselves to deal with what's ahead, increased heart rate, increased respiration, all of those anxious feelings that you have internally, that's just preparing you for action. And when we view stress that way, not only is it not bad for us, it serves as fuel. Use stress as a healthy form of pressure that functions as the competitive and ambitious driver inside each of us. Pressure can stretch our comfort zone, and when we are stretched, we expand simultaneously. Expansion is growth because it brings out the best in us. It pushes us to go beyond our average and ordinary performance to do our best. So, when I'm getting ready to get on a stage and speak to a big group of people, even though I've been doing this for years, my heart rate goes up, my adrenaline is shooting through my body, right? I need that. I need that because when I have that kind of eustress or an increase in energy happening, it's clarifying my brain and bringing me all the way up to the peak of peak performance, okay? It doesn't become toxic stress until it goes over that line. So if we look at it like I'm getting exactly what I need to have a great training that I'm giving, performance on a stage, new experience that I'm nervous about, remember that your body's working for you when it gives you that little jolt of adrenaline right before you're going to do something new and maybe a little bit scary. And so we can thank ourselves and we can say, oh good, thanks body, you're giving me all the chutzpah I need to have a really successful presentation, okay? Um, the, the wonderful thing is that when you stress hits its peak, it starts to come down. So we generally get just enough to put us up and over so that we can produce what it is we need to do and then we naturally start coming down. Anyway, I think it's important that we look at all sides of the word, right? All sides. We've got the stressful stress and we've got the you stress. So use this to your benefit. Remember that your body's working for you by giving you an extra jolt of energy to ensure you're going to have a peak performance. It is important to note that the body cannot discern stress from you stress because the variation between the two is quite thin. It is actually the mind that consciously differentiates between the two. Without this differentiation, a eustress situation can exact the same toll as a distressful situation on the body. In California, wine growers stress grapes by providing less sunlight and water. The stressing process is intentional because it keeps the grapes between the border of survival and dying, and the grapes that survive make the finest wine. How do you handle pressure? or stress determines your everyday resilience, whether you're an athlete who's performing or a person pursuing daily goals at work or in life. Pressure has the power to bring out the best in us. A healthy form of pressure, which is demanding more from oneself, is the key to peak performance. Great performers turn their pressure into pleasure. Like top performers, we can literally train our brain to be resilient by using our daily intake of pressure to ultimately enhance our performance and outcome.
Just like lifting weights helps us in developing bicep muscles, daily practice helps us in shaping our brain to be more resilient. But most people are not equipped to handle everyday stress. They feel they are stressed when they are presented with a situation, especially a challenging situation. But when we train our brain to solve problems or to handle everyday challenges, we become better at handling pressure. Distress. The medical definition of stress is the perception of a real or imagined threat to your body or your ego. Stress is essentially when a situation, pressure or change exceeds our coping abilities. Take a roller coaster ride for example. You might have two people that go on a roller coaster together. One person may take a genuine enjoyment out of that experience. Other people might take a genuine sense of fear and anxiety. The roller coaster itself doesn't change, but our perceptions of it will differ. The same can be said for other stressful situations. Ultimately, it depends on your perception of that situation that determines whether or not you see it as a stressor. Of course, the roller coaster example is an example of short term stress, which in isolation may not cause any harm whatsoever. It's only when stress accumulates beyond your coping abilities and without adequate recovery, the stress can become a problem. Stress is likely to occur after an accumulation of life change events. Those events can be both positive and negative. They might include a business realignment, a promotion at work, or even something enjoyable such as a holiday or a Christmas break. What matters is there's a change to your normal routine. When a number of changes to your life happen within a short space of time, that's when it can have an impact on your resilience and your stress. Stress actually occurs when the demands of a certain situation exceed our perceived ability to control that situation. The key solution is that the more you perceive that you can control the situation, the lower you get stressed and vice versa. The perception of control lies in a person's coping skills along with competence and confidence in dealing with complexities. The mind and body are integrated. They affect each other. What you think affects your body and how you feel affects your brain. Over time, too much stress can increase your heart rate, your breathing rate, your blood pressure, blood sugar, muscle tension, and risk of blood clotting. It can also increase your risk of anxiety, depression, addiction, and obesity, and it can compromise your immune system. All of these can lead to chronic disease, and chronic disease can be hard to manage. So it's important to find positive and healthy ways to control the harmful effects of stress on your mind and your body. There are many ways you can learn to manage stress. It involves making small changes in your mental, emotional, and physical habits and routines. Managing stress, mental. Let us begin by bringing few changes in our mental aspects associated with stress. Anything that disturbs your sense of peace and tranquility can act like a stressor. It could be a noise, someone yelling, traffic sometimes, lack of privacy or irrational demands from other people at work or at home. A stressor can be thoughts, can be sights, events, situations, circumstances or predicaments that you don't like. We live in a world where stressors are everywhere, so if you cannot change the stressor, change yourself. It involves shifting your mindset and perspective so that you are able to adapt to stressful situations to regain your low sense of control by turning around your expectations and attitude. Another important step is that you take time to identify the various sources of stress in your life. After doing so, analyze if it is within your power range to overcome. One of the common stressors are watching mindless television, especially the news, crisis news network. When was the last time you heard a good news on television, except when your favorite team would have won that match? Most news out there that come out of this so-called breaking news that comes in every half an hour is created to evoke fight or flight response in you by activating your sympathetic nervous system so that you're constantly dipped into a cocktail of cortisol and adrenaline. There was a time when news was just half an hour telecast a day and life was pretty peaceful. Today there are thousands of channels battling for your attention to constantly feed you the news not to empower you but to feed fear onto you. When the Twin Towers was hit by planes, 
It was a one-time event. But how many of you would have seen it at least a hundred times? When you say something to yourself, just one time, that has less power. But if you keep saying the same thing over and over again, like thousands of times, that's called incantations or like mantra, which is a subconscious programming technique. When you repeatedly see the same thing over and over again, it's again a programming technique. No wonder that's why most of these so-called television programs are called programs. It's some kind of programming that takes place in the back of your mind. So if the evening news makes you anxious, turn off the television. If a news is so important to you, don't worry, it will find you. Take an audit of all possible stressors in your life. Avoid them at will. If the traffic brings you unwelcome stress, then resort to taking longer or less traveled road. Choose grocery shopping online. If you know going to the market is making you more unpleasant and if you find that is an unpleasant chore for you. The bottom line is that you need to learn to accept the things you can change and change the things you can accept. Just as acceptance is important, so does the act of assertiveness. One of the best ways to avoid stress is to cultivate assertiveness. You must know that most of the stress can be avoided by simply saying no. It's necessary to know your limits, to be aware of how much you can bite and chew so that you don't bite more than you can chew. Whether it's your personal or professional life, taking on more than you can handle is a surefire recipe that will result in a stressful situation. Another important thing to consider, as Tony Robbins always says, learn to distinguish between the shoots and the musts in your life. Learn to prioritize. Go for the majors in life. The minors, remember, they are your distractions. So ignore them at will. But a lot of stress is caused by your own beliefs, your own thoughts, your own fears, your own imagining things in the future, which is what worry is. Worry is worrying about things that haven't happened yet and thinking about the negative things that you don't want to have happen. So if I'm worrying about you getting sick or I'm worried about there's not going to be enough money to pay the staff or if I'm worried about... Um, you know, getting COVID-19 myself, or if I'm worried about, you know, is the stock market going to crash, which a lot of people are talking about, you know, whatever. If I'm, but I'm thinking about the future, and I'm imagining the very thing I don't want to have happen. What you do want to do instead is replace that with fantasizing what you want to have happen in the future. As um, Zig Ziglar used to say, worrying is negative goal setting. And whatever you think about, you bring about. You know, and so basically where your attention goes, your energy flows. So we want our energy flowing toward creating our positive future, not our negative future. Teach yourself problem-solving skills. Problems are stressors, and resolving them helps eliminate the stress triggered by them. Effective problem solvers identify problems, generate alternative solutions, select the optimal solutions, and evaluate outcomes after implementation. One of the reasons why most people feel that they are stressed out is that they overwork like they are burning out. Relaxation and sleep is equally important because it refuels, replenishes, and re-energizes a person to work again. Mindfulness and meditation is proven to be a great practice to reduce stress levels. Athletes like Tiger Woods have used non-reactive awareness to handle stressors and distractions from the fans and press all around him. Meditation will help your nervous system get rid of the distinct set of stresses you've accumulated throughout your highly individualized lifetime, leaving you better rested, more intuitive, physically healthier, and in a better state where you'll be able to access energy so that you can use your unique expertise to create innovative responses to the specific demands in your life. Now, if you introduced meditation to me 10 years ago, I would have laughed. I would have thought it some crazy hippie thing, but it has been the most profound thing I've ever done. And just to put this really quickly into context, could you imagine coming home from a day's work sweating and feeling dirty and just going straight in and not having a shower, sitting down with the family. In fact, oh, let's not shower the next day or the day after that. Could you imagine how you start to feel? And I think this is, this is like, meditation is like, the shower for our brain. It sounds crazy, but for people that aren't meditating, there's so much stuff going on up in here. We, we clean our bodies to, to feel nice and healthy. Why don't we stop and clean our brain? 
Meditation just dumps out the, the crap, to put it bluntly. Meditation alone has taken me from an eight to nine out of 10 warrior to a, like a three or four out of 10 warrior. When you're more balanced mentally, you can handle most of stressful situations better. Having faith in something outside of ourselves makes our life worth fighting for and supports us in recovering from stress and trauma. It also encourages social connections, giving and receiving love, gratitude, acting with compassion and empathy, all of which circle back to resilience. Emotional health. Stress often springs from stressful situations that you may find difficult to handle emotionally. Emotional resilience comes from emotional intelligence. It's your ability to handle your emotions in a healthy manner. Most negative emotional experiences spring from the undercurrents of other unpleasant emotions like resentment, shame, guilt, hurt, and regrets. If you're unable to handle resentment, it results in the recurring emotional expressions of anger, fear, self-hatred, and bitterness. Shame and guilt can lead to self-loathing and depression. Regrets in life can express themselves as sadness and bitterness because the hurt will always find its nastiest emotional expressions through anger. When you learn to forgive, you let go of anger and resentments. Through dealing with shame, regrets, hurt and guilt, you will learn to mourn with your emotional energy that is directed towards the advancement of your goals rather than addictions and other distractions in your life. Becoming more resilient also means that you are in control of your emotions. When you lack control over your emotions, you are likely to take permanent decisions based on the temporary spur of the emotions in you. While you're stressed, you cannot think straight. Any hasty decision rarely brings the best results. Therefore, to be more resilient, you have to keep calm. Gauge and evaluate things logically so that you're able to make a plan and put it into action. You need to start making efforts to replenish your emotional energy. We are emotional beings that need connection, love, empathy, and compassion to survive. Make friends, socialize, and connect with people. There is nothing more calming than spending quality time with another human being who makes you feel safe and understood during challenging times. At the same time, Avoid people who stress you out. If someone consistently causes stress in your life, limit the amount of time you spend with that person or end the relationship. Physical health. Health is everything, but it's a fundamental trait of resilience that people often forget about. To have a sound mind, you also need a sound body. Resilience relies on our health to function at its best. Otherwise, Stress eats us away, and we break down, literally and figuratively. Resilient people take good care of their body and preserve it. Healthy food, well-earned rest, and regular exercise is the key to their physical well-being. This pays off as it helps in reducing pressure on them. Well-nourished bodies are better equipped to handle any kind of stress. It's necessary to eat a healthy and balanced diet in order to optimize your energy. Our body has a way of dealing with our mental state and vice versa. Therefore, the fastest and the most efficient way to overcome stress is to work out and to engage in some kind of regular exercise. It's true that when someone is stressed, la the last thing that they might want to feel like doing is getting out of bed and do some exercise. Now, the good news is you build up your physical resilience every time you're not sitting still. Even doing something small, like taking a few steps on the spa or pumping your fists over your head can help to boost your physical resilience. So try it now. Stand up and take a few steps on the spa. <laughs> Obviously, that's only a small, simple movement, but by doing it, you're not sitting still. So you're preparing your body to deal with stress better. See, if you went to the gym, you wouldn't pick up the biggest, heaviest weight in there straight away, would you? You'd start small, and get good at lifting a smaller weight, and then you'd work your way up to lifting a bigger one. So start with some small, simple movements and acknowledge that that's progress. And then the next time you can do something slightly more active, and then slightly more active again the next time after that. But engaging in physical activity is a huge stress reliever. 
Of course, to do this habitually, you don't need to be an athlete or spend hours at the gym. Even baby steps will do, you know. When you take some small steps on a daily basis, that can develop into a great habit. The sole purpose of doing so is that when you exercise, your body releases endorphins that make you feel good and it can serve as a valuable distractions from your daily troubles. When you move, even lightly, what you do typically is increase blood flow. And as circulation increases, you get more blood coming to your brain. And with it, it brings oxygen and glucose. So already you can see why even light exercise tends to correlate with improved mental performance and sharpness because you've got more resources pumping around your brain and consequently you become more productive and improve your mental performance. Also, as you exercise, you tend to produce more myokines, which are really peptides that enable you to feel better. It improves your mood, reduces anxiety, and that also contributes to the association we have with exercise and resilience. So think about that. Thinking about light exercise and ideally every day, what could you change, maybe starting tomorrow, to improve your relationship or the number of minutes you spend on an average day or an average week engaged in light activity? Breathing is the key to distressing and healing when it comes to your physical and mental health. A person's usual breathing is often shallow in nature, which starves the body and the brain of oxygen, ultimately affecting the immune and cardiopulmonary system. Therefore, you must develop the practice of taking several deep diaphragmatic breaths in a tense moment so that it helps in clearing your mind, body, and soul. Stress, either eustress or distress, is not entirely caused by external situations such as job pressure or conflict at home. It is caused as much or more by how we interpret our situation. Stress is a response. There is a healthy and unhealthy way to respond to almost anything that happens to us. Even though we have pathologized stress so much in our culture, the original dictionary meaning of stress means to emphasize. Think about it. Sometimes we need to emphasize so that we focus on the majors in life. We will persist in what we aspire to achieve because our eyes are on the prize, but still, if you are experiencing distress, you are not likely happy, healthy, or performing at our best. It's important to reevaluate what we are chasing. Resilience is ultimately about having control over our lives in the sense that we are able to take the right decisions, stick on to the things that we are committed to, and to pursue excellence with enthusiasm and energy. It means that we will persevere till we succeed. Therefore, no ghost from our past, present, or from the coming future should have any power over us. We take charge of the present. We bounce back from defeats. We heal and recover fast so that we are ready to charge again, relentlessly, courageously, and optimistically till we succeed. That, my friend, is truly a resilient mindset. We cannot change the challenges or the effects of the traumatic events that we've endured. Neither can we change the family we were born into, nor the way we or any other person acted in the past with us. But all we can do today is begin, today itself, to write a grand new ending to our life story. We are truly the authors of our lives, and knowing that, my dear friend, is what will make us resilient in the first place.